JavaScript is constantly evolving. Are you keeping up? In this video, we'll explore some of the best practices every JavaScript developer should know to write clean, modern, and maintainable code. But please note, project-defined practices trump all other practices. If you want to make a change, make sure everyone is fully on board with it, 100% first. Anyway, that is enough about the legacy that has been left to you. Let's look at the future. So one big change has been the introduction of let and const, which were introduced as alternatives to the typical ver for declaring variables. The issue with ver is it's prone to scoping issues and bugs. In a nutshell, let and const provide block scoping. Let for variables that change and const for variables that don't. In older code bases, it wouldn't have been uncommon to run into function prototype approach for emulation of classes. But times have changed, and now there is a better way to achieve this. Classes, which has a much cleaner syntax. On the subject of classes, it used to be the norm to use an underscore to denote private properties or methods in classes, which wasn't really actually that private. So when you actually need something to be private, there is the hash syntax, the official language feature that enforces true privacy, because well, otherwise people can exploit your stuff. Arrow functions are often used to make callback functions or anonymous functions more concise and readable. They're especially useful when working with higher order functions like map, filter, or reduce. Arrow functions enhance readability by removing boilerplate code, making callback functions and inline expressions much more concise. In addition, they are particularly valuable when working with classes or event handlers, as they automatically bind this to the surrounding lexical scope. This avoids common bugs related to this in traditional function expressions, especially in asynchronous or callback heavy code. Logic is somewhat important in code, or is it? It is. It used to be that developers would use logical or operator to assign default values when a variable is undefined or null. However, this can behave unexpectedly when the variable holds values like zero, false, or an empty string because or treats them as falsy and substitutes the default value. A better way is to use the nullish coalescing operator as it only checks for null or undefined, leaving other falsy values like zero, false, or empty strings intact. It provides a more precise way of handling default values in cases where null or undefined should trigger the fallback. It prevents errors caused by using or, which may unintentionally override valid falsy values. Using nullish coalescing results in more predictable behavior improving both code clarity and reliability. When dealing with deeply nested objects or arrays, it's common to have to check whether each property or array element exists before trying to access the next level. Without optional training, this requires verbose and repetitive code. Instead, you can use the optional chaining operator to reduce the amount of boilerplate code and make it easier to work with deeply nested structures. This ensures your code is cleaner and less error prone by handling null or undefined values gracefully without the need for multiple checks. This leads to more readable and maintainable code, especially when working with dynamic data or complex objects. So we hope that this video has given you something you can take away and apply to your own code. The main thing to remember is that the best practice is the one that makes your JavaScript easy to understand and maintain. But if you want some more best practices, check out our next video where we discuss the features in JavaScript that you should know. Nay, you must know.